function pointers in C is a really powerful technique. Please make sure that you like and subscribe so that other people can find this too. A function pointer is a pointer that points at a function instead of pointing at data. Now to see how we can use that, we need an example where we need to do something a couple of different ways. So I'm gonna use a tax example. Uh, if you are in the low tax range, you get a tax credit for every dependent and you don't pay any other taxes. If you're in the mid tax range, you get $1,000 off your income for every dependent and then pay a 15% tax. If you're in the high tax range, you get $1,000 off your income from every dependent and pay a 25% tax. But if you have a whole lot of dependents, you can't zero that too far. You still have to pay at least 15% of your total income. So here are the functions that calculate three different ways of calculating taxes. To show you how to use a function pointer in this tax case, I'm going to build a little thing that um, asks you for an income and a number of dependents, and then it calculates your taxes for you. Um, so you can see here, this is declaring a function pointer. The name of the variable is process, and you know that it's a function pointer because it has those parentheses around the asterisk and the name of the variable. If we didn't have those parentheses, it would think that it was a double pointer which is not what we want. So to make it be a function pointer, we have to put the parentheses around that asterisk. And this function pointer has to point at functions that take two parameters, a double and an int, and that return a double. So the declaration of a function pointer is the name of the variable that you want it to be with an asterisk in parentheses, the parameter list after it, and the return type before it. So then I get some input from the user and depending on their value of their income, I set process to be the function that we want it to call. So if the income is high, I set process to be high taxes and so on. Once I have that set up, then we can call the function that that function pointer points at just by using the name of the function pointer and passing in the right parameters and it'll return back a value that we're gonna store in taxes and I'll put that to the user. Now, as an example, that seems like a really silly example because I could have just called high taxes, mid taxes and low taxes instead of storing it into a function pointer. I was just trying to show you how function pointers work. The real power of function pointers comes when you combine them with the idea of table-driven logic. So in this example now, I have created a table that pairs the maximum income with the function that should be called for that level of income. So this is saying if you get up to 30,000, you are in the low tax bracket. From that to 50,000, you are in the mid tax bracket. And above that, up to uh, too much money, you're in the high tax bracket. So if you look at how I've declared this, it's the table's type is a struct that has one double that is the maximum value and then a function pointer. And you can see the function pointer because we have the parentheses and the asterisk. So the name of that field in the struct is process. It has to point at a function that takes a double and an int and, it will, and that function has to return a double. This table is called a stair-step table because it isn't mapping one value to a function pointer. It is mapping a range of values to a function pointer. So now, given that I have that table, the logic for how I calculate somebody's tax is I search the table to get the right table level, and then I can call the process function in that level of the table, passing in the income independence, and that'll return the taxes. Now we have all the benefits of a table-driven solution. Uh, if the tax calculations change, we can change the right function, but if there are more levels of taxes, we can change the table to have more levels of taxes, and we don't have to change the logic for how we find the right tax calculation. 
I'd like to do one more example showing how you use function pointers in a table-driven solution because this is a really powerful technique. For this example, I'm building a, an assembly language interpreter for a teeny tiny little machine that only has one register and it has three instructions. It can add to the register, you can subtract from the register, or you can print out what is inside the register. So I have three functions for the three things that my little machine is supposed to be able to do. Each one of them takes an integer parameter and returns nothing. And you'll notice that output has to have that parameter even though it never uses it. Because in order to put them in a table with a function pointer, they all have to have exactly the same declaration. This is the structure of my table. I'm gonna map a command to a function pointer. So my command is a character pointer and my function pointer is named process. I know it is a function pointer because it has the asterisk and the parentheses around it. It takes one parameter that is an integer and it returns nothing. And the table is gonna map the add string to the add function and the substring to the subtract function and the out string to the output function. My interpreter is going to run by calling the execute method passing in the string that is the assembly instruction. So there's a little tiny detail our execute command has to worry about. That string that we're passed in is a string literal. That means it's not editable. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy that into an editable area so that I can parse the command separate from the parameter. To parse them separate, I'm gonna search for where is the space, and I'm gonna replace that space with a null, and then the command will start at the beginning, and the parameter will start one position after where we just put that null. Uh, I think we should look at that in the debugger. So I've put a breakpoint right after we finished all of that parsing. And if I run it in the debugger, you can see here we have the original command is add 32. And then the editable command is add and the parameter is 32. Uh, but the cool thing to do is to look at the how that plays out in memory. If I look at that, you can see we copied the original add 32 into one place. And we walked in and put this null here. So you can see we have the add as the command and the 32 as the parameter. And even though they feel like they're like really different things, all we did to separate them to be two strings was to put a null between them. Now that we've parsed the command and have it as a separate string, we want to search our table to find the right function to execute. So you can see this loop is walking through mapping sub i, where mapping is our table, and it's comparing the command in the table to the command that we just parsed out. And if they're equal, then at that position of the table, it's calling the process function, passing in the parameters. So we can watch that work. Our command right now is add. That's gonna match the first row of the table so when we call this process function, if I step into the process function, you can see it's going to add. Woohoo! So function pointers in C lets you declare a variable that's going to point at a piece of code instead of pointing at a piece of data. The great power in this comes from the fact that we can build tables that associate a particular situation with a particular piece of code that you want to execute. And then those are function pointers that lets us build complicated systems without having complicated logic.